All right, we're here with another one. This is really cool front bumper on it. This is a Western Spring Service, Denver, Colorado. It came out of real close to Colorado. It came out of Western Nebraska, probably, I don't know, an hour from Colorado or so. Englewood Lumber Company says it on both doors, so we know it's all original. Looks like it's based out of Denver, Colorado area. Really solid, doesn't need cab corners or anything. Uh, we don't know if it runs. That's Clay's department. Pretty solid truck though. Not a whole lot of rust in here. We got a little bit, little itty bitty hole here in the rocker. You know, not much bigger, maybe two thumbs. Not crazy. <laughs> got a couple pillow dents here in the back of the cab. It's on its uncut original frame, which is really nice. I know a lot of people like that. It's got a two speed uh, air controlled rear. I'm not sure who makes it. A lot of them are Eaton's, but this cab corner here is a little bit crunchier, but overall pretty good. So we'll see if this one runs. Hopefully, it, uh, loud. Hopefully it does, uh, but it's how I like to buy them. It's got great patina. It's pretty complete. Uh, we have the rest of the original bumper laying on the ground over there. It got ripped off at some point. This thing was probably stuck down in the dirt and they thought they could pull really hard on it with like a wheel loader or a farm tractor or something. And the problem with using equipment that big is you have no idea when you're, when you're like savagely winning the battle. So, uh, and this guy had wheel loaders that were like 200,000 pounds. You could, I could drive my pickup underneath his wheel loader and it, he could literally pick up a train car with it loaded. So I'm pretty sure that's what he was using to move some of this stuff. So definitely a little crude, um, but Clay will get it all looking good and tossed back together here. We're pretty backed up in the shop right now. We're also kind of backed up on videos and content as well, so bear with us. This one here is gonna be a really good truck for somebody though. We'll have the title here shortly. We're gonna get it through the shop starting today. It's going in, get a little surgery done, a little makeover, and uh, we'll see if Clay can get this thing running.
All I'm doing here is pulling off the inspection cover, spinning around with a pry bar to see if it moves. Those are concrete. That's coming. put a battery to it and turn it over and check all the compression in every cylinder and that'll be where we're going next all on it that stuff was like punk So when you did a compression test, do you remember like some of the numbers? Oh, I get the paper. I wrote it all down. Okay. Yeah. This one's 50, 0, 25, 25, 75, 40. It's pretty low all the way across. Spend a little bit more time on it. Try and get number two to pump up. Okay. Play with the valves on number two. I'll I'll get some uh, blaster spray down and look real good. Um, don't use blaster. Oh, in the cylinders, yes. Top side, no. Top side's motor oil only. Yeah, we don't use blaster up top. Um, you shouldn't even use at this point. You're trying to get compression. 
Spin it, spin it, spin it. Try and get, if you put blaster in the cylinder, the blaster out. It let it, it'll probably seep around the rings or you'll blow it out of the holes, out of the spark plug holes. Use motor oil now or transmission fluid. Because if you got weak I kind of got like a mix. Okay. Well, you want something thick <clears throat> enough. Yeah, I'll get... get some added compression out of it. You have compression on these other cylinders. That's just telling me these cylinders are dry. So, like 25 pounds is 25 pounds. 75 is great. 50 is plenty. 40 is like, eh. 25 is workable. I would try and lubricate them. Cylinder 2, you likely have a stuck valve being a zero. So just spin it and watch that intake and the exhaust valves and see if they're moving. They were all moving. They moved pretty well. You got a borescope? I don't, but... The valve train's moving pretty well. My course of thought here is if you got valves moving good, but you got no compression, you wiped out of a ring, you got a hole in a piston, or you got holes in valves, they do appear like they're moving pretty well. Could try tightening those valves up. I, I can see that those two valves that are showing low compression are showing less threads than all the other ones. Yeah, I could definitely try to tighten them up there. Yeah, it might not take much. So, this is the cylinder here that we have super low compression on. When we hit the starter, the valves are moving nice. What I noticed at a glance is we got less thread showing on these two push rods than I do all the other ones. Tightening these up could fix a valve issue if there is one. Maybe they're just not seating all the way. It's spinning nice and easy. It's got compression on other cylinders. I think, I think we can get to pump up. Uh, we're gonna try and put a bore scope together to see if we can get a camera in number two and make sure there's not a hole in a piston or something. The one thing you always have to remember with these old cars is they got parked for a reason, right? Literally got taken off the road for a reason. It's more common to burn up a cylinder of fuel injection than on a carbureted engine because that fuel comes down the intake manifold and gets evenly dispersed. But you could add a spark plug issue on that cylinder or something where it was misfiring for a long time. You could burn up a piston that way. Business back then was no different than today in, in the way of, you know, you get busy and it's still running. It just runs a little rough. You just keep it pushing to get the job done. So it wouldn't take that long to, to kill a cylinder with a bad misfire. So who knows? Just start running through the steps. The only thing that causes low compression here is cylinder issue, piston issue, valve issue. That's, it's simple. So we'll just start rolling stuff out. Is there any play in the Actually, pretty good all the way. You know what I'm saying? Well, what I'm thinking is if you back off on them and give them some play, it may be that the lifters are pumped up. Because this, if this is a 53, it'll have hydraulic lifters. In it. Bring it up, bring each cylinder up top dead center. Okay. So both valves are closed. And then back off on the adjustments till you get a little put, put just a wee little bit in there, like 10 thousandths just to see, because I've seen these pump up and not let, let the valves close all the way, just because they're old. And I mean, even the way it turns over, it's just like, it turns really, really fast, like it ain't No, no it's, uh, oh. It's spinning. As quick as that turns, it's not even. See what I'm saying? It's gonna be real hard to get it to. Okay, there's it. Let's start with number one. Alright, loosen them up. Well, you wanna use a box wrench. I'm pretty sure I broke that one. Give me a sec, let me get back out.
Never mind. They're already loose. Yeah, it's. Maybe we should leave it be. Yeah, I guess. Thanks. It's almost like the rings are out of it. Yeah, that's the only one that hits 75. The 100? Huh. It might have, that sitting might have did something to it. Hopefully that one back here comes back. Dead? Uh, no, that's uh, 60. That's good. That's not bad. I think it's one of these two that are dead. I think it was number three on your list was no no compression. I think it was coming this way. It would have been the fourth one. Because I started here. Oh, there was a hundred. Sitting might have done some good. Huh? 75. Eighty. All right. Well, oh, I think she'll run with the. With the uh... I did sit all weekend and soak. I think we had some rings that were, uh, you know, just. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's good. It's gonna come off anyway if it's gonna, you know, run. What's that? If it's gonna run, this is gonna have to come off. What are you doing there, carburetor? Yeah, if we're gonna go that far with it, we're gonna have to pull it off. Well, yeah, the spark will be easy, but the carburetor is gonna be hard. Can you get it off without taking the manifold off? I don't think so, because it's so gunked up under there. Yeah. I don't. I can't really get into it to really like, you know clean it off very well okay. it, be, it might be easier to take it off as one unit and put it back on yeah that, that big vacuum line and that other rack you don't need them just okay. cut them and make sure they're plugged when you put it back on okay yeah make yeah leave all the linkage together too i mean it might all come together now these these gms you know when the key's straight up and down they're on you know with the foot starter yeah no, sometimes they do need a soak in, just like you said. I think that's what did it. Yeah. I'm gonna make some coffee. Okay. Compression's back then? Yeah, we got compression back. Like, we have a hundred and a couple of the cylinders. No, none of them's under 50, so. Huh. So we're almost like back to life almost. Yeah, we're kind of back. We're, be we're better off than where we were at Friday. Oh yeah, we, we had two cylinders Friday with no compression. Yeah, if we could get the gas, if we can get the uh, carburetor repaired, then we'll and the fuel pump, then we'll be ready to start it.
very public. <laughs> Alright, what are we gonna do about the washer? I was suggesting that let's put it together and put some gas in the bowl and see if it pumps. Okay. On two legs, three points. Okay. All right. Yeah. When you jumped out of there, I thought about the guy I seen down in the garage one time. Face first. You didn't put the carburetor on there. No, I think I can get it on. You forgot? No, I think I can get it on. That's. You think you'll you'll be better off this way? Yeah. Safety about how to get out off a piece of machinery. Now listen. Whatever time you're leaving, you allow yourself at least a half hour before you leave to pick everything up. Because that was my lecture on Friday. Okay, now, Clay, the key works. I tried it on and off. Okay? So you don't have to worry about that. On is straight up and down and off is to the left. Just like the rest of the Chevys. Yeah, is it still gonna be okay? Yep. Yeah. I'll do the rest of them, then I can actually tighten them. Ain't too bad once you get all the junk out of the way, is it? Didn't he buy a case of WD? Oh. 
carburetors on. Most of the lines don't like the new fuel with the alcohol in it, or as they say, ethanol. I, I got a long, extra long piece here, but probably going to need it for the can. Okay. Uh, another thing, you want to try to remember when you order this from Pep Boys, you tell them you don't want the high pressure fuel line. Yeah. Because that's what they'll send, and it's about three bucks a foot. This gasket is really up and hard to get off. At least like it is now, it'll, it'll just probably run. Okay, buddy. Now watch this. I'm telling you what's going to happen here. I'm predicting this, this diaphragm's going to be shot. Yeah, you go through all that. Yeah, and then it needs a pump anyways. Which will be a good job for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it does need a pump, then I figure we could just put that valve cover on and then. Uh... Oh, give me another quarter 30 weight. That's what you can do. Oh, okay. Just dump it on in. Yep. Yeah, three quarts low. That's quite a bit. See if she pumps gas. Come on. Clay, hold this. Now take it over to you. It's got gas in it. Sure. Now put the hose in the gas. Go ahead. Sounds like it's sucking it. Is it? Yes. Yeah, there she goes. She's working. Good, good, good. All right, so that's your feed. Now you got to run a hose from here. Tomorrow we're cleaning up right now. To your carburetor, put a filter in it right before the carburetor, or I don't care where you put it in the line. That hose, you could actually put that up and over and down if it's easier. Okay. Or underneath, whatever's easier. Okay. Just This ain't clamped. You need to clamp this one. I'll take care of all that in the morning. Yep. Now we got full. Uh, the spark? Yeah, oh well, yeah, we got tremendous spark. Awesome. Oh, don't forget, the key is off right now to the left. Okay. Turn it straight up and down is on, just one straight up and down. That's the way all the old Chevys are. Wish I had a fucking beer.
Control the carburetor some, but all right, you ready? Add. Ready? Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that's good. Dude, it sounds really good. Dude, that engine sounds super healthy. It does. Oh. Now it should stay idle and good.
Dios por él. Bring the bumper up. I have probably, what do you think, 30 of these maybe? Something like, Something that. like that. In all various conditions of junk to $1,000 visors. The junky ones we keep just so we have parts so I can hopefully keep some together, put some together. You hear this one yet? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this one's narrow, this one's fat. This is a different series, so if you look, grab that other visor. We have a Fulton visor training course here. So, you see all those holes? Yes. Those are your adjustment screws. So when you take these screws out, it exposes that adjustment bar and there's set screws here, you can make it wider. These still adjust, but they don't adjust as much. It might be enough for one of these AD cabs, I can't remember. These were really, really popular on these. So the 600 might fit it. So I would just hold it up there and see what you don't want to do is be forcing these out because then it flattens the visor and yeah. it'll just not be right. If it's real far off, pop these out, see if you can widen it, then put it all back together. If it still doesn't fit, then call me and we're gonna just try and fix one of these. Yes.
Hey everybody, Patina Pete here. We got a fresh one out of the shop. Took me forever to get this thing in from out west. It's finally here and it's finally done and it's finally ready for sale. Runs and drives, 1953 Chevy. I threw a Fulton visor on it. This came, it looks like out of Denver, Colorado. I got this one out of Nebraska. Um, got a good title on it. Runs and drives, 235 six cylinder underneath the cab because it is cab over. COE, cab over engine. Pretty nice inside. Like I said, runs and drives. We're missing the bottom of the bench seat, but this one here has a center shifter, so it takes like two kind of bucket seats on the left and right. They're like two little seat bottom bases. Not real hard to make. Got about an $800 Fulton visor on it. Good title, runs and drives, Englewood lumber, Englewood's always up to no good. Keep an eye on our page, runs, drives, Western cab over the Fulton visor. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on the YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So if you have an original paint or an original old fastback Mustang that needs work like these ones I have on my trailer, or if you have an old pickup or again, a convertible Impala cab over truck, whether it doesn't matter where you are, we buy nationwide here in the United States, all the way as far as California. I've had stuff, New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, high desert stuff we love. So, or if you're in the East Coast and it's a rusty Mustang or a rusty convertible Impala, that is fine. We typically don't buy many trucks on the East Coast, but I buy a lot of cars on the East Coast. If you have cab over parts also, especially for these early Fords, I'd be interested in that. And never hurts to send me an email or a text ironcitygarage at gmail.com you're welcome to send me an email or a text message probably the best you kind of get an instant answer that way 412-335-6100 i'd love to talk to you hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages